Wow, man, he has to read everything he says. Everything he says he has to read. Uh, it creates pain, uh, gut dysbiosis, uh, brain fog, maybe. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, it has been a while since I reacted to vegans, especially Henge Herbivore. You told me in my live streams that you want to see more vegan reaction videos. If that is so, give me a quick thumbs up so I know that you want these videos and I will do more of them. Anyways, today we're going to react to Henshi and he says there are top five mistakes that new vegans apparently, allegedly make. Let's have a look. Mistake number one. There he is, compassionate hench with the ethics shirt. Remember when he weaseled his way into the company and betrayed his friend, Tim Sheaf? Yeah. One, trying to eat too healthfully, too quickly. If previously <laughs> we've been eating a lot of animal products, a lot of processed junk, not very much fiber rich foods, to then bung in a load of ah oh, oh my belly <laughs> exactly this happens when you eat too healthy too quickly right this is how it looks like kids <laughs> this is absolute insanity this is a mental illness this would never happen to your body if you ingest something healthy <laughs> this happens when you ingest something that is not meant for human consumption it is very very simple you as a former bodybuilder should know about this most of us grew up on a standard western diet so we ate candy we ate pizzas we ate spaghettis however you as a bodybuilder made the dietary shift at some point. So did I. When I was 16 years old, I cut out all the crap and I started eating just rice and chicken, oatmeal and protein powders. That might not be the best diet on this planet. However, it was a huge improvement. How did my body react? Obviously, it was a relief for my digestion. I felt overall better, more energetic. I had more strength in the gym and I started to build muscle because of the increased protein. That was a healthier diet than the previous diet and I saw results right away. Every time you eat something that is healthy for your body, your body reacts in a certain thankful way because there's only a species specific diet. Do you think that if you would feed junk food to a cat all her life and then at some point you start introducing raw meat, which is obviously her species specific diet, she will react like this, uh, cramping and dying? Obviously not. Cats are meant to eat raw meat. Humans are meant to eat meat as well. It is very, very simple. This here happens if you introduce something to the body that is foreign to it, that is not meant for the body. Tons and tons of fiber create dysbiosis in the gut. This is what happens if you eat plant-based junk. Foods, we can create a lot of distress in the body. The types of food... No, you cannot create... Ah, no, you cannot create stress in the body by eating a species specific diet. You will feel a relief. Give it a go. I pray for you. I hope truly that you will wake up. You are under the vegan spell, the doctrine of devils. Still, after so many years, you're torturing yourself for no apparent reason. Apparently, after so many years, you still have to suffer. You still haven't learned the lesson. And that is okay. I'm not here to convince you. Do whatever you want. I couldn't care less. You're grown men. But of course, this doesn't justify to spread misinformation to your viewers. Children out there, if you put something into your body and then your belly makes ouchy ouchy, you shouldn't eat it. Foods that we eat invite certain types of gut bacteria to live in our colon. If we've been preferentially feeding the type of bacteria that eat animal products and processed junk. Yes, yes, yes. Gut bacteria that lives in our colon. Yeah, exactly. What ferments in our colon? Hmm? It is, of course, fiber. Fiber converts to short chain fatty acids, aka butyrate, in our colon. It ferments in our colon. Nothing else ferments in our colon. This is why you have distress. It has nothing to do with the bacteria. If you look into it, you will see that vegans suffer on their diet for years and years and years on end and they never resolve the issues. Same goes for you. You are still in digestive stress. You still didn't heal your gut and you're still wondering why suffer we're not going to have enough of the helpful preventella strains of gut bacteria required <laughs> the preventella 
trains are, this is how you spell it. Oh, uh, yeah. To process fiber. Therefore, if we suddenly shovel loads of fiber in, we're gonna get what's called gut dysbiosis. It ain't pretty. It can be bloating, wind. There can be some pain. You can get constipation. You wow, man, he has to read everything he says. Everything he says he has to read. Uh, it creates pain, uh, gut dysbiosis, uh, brain fog, maybe. You can get diarrhea, you can get constipation with diarrhea. Like I say, it's a total, total mess. The way to avoid this is by transitioning slowly over the course of just a few short weeks. So you've got your junk food, you've got your animal products, you've got your healthy whole plant foods. Yeah, absolutely ridiculous. It never works that way. As I said already, you know for a fact that most vegans, no matter how fast or slow they transition, after years and years and years, they still have issues with eating high amounts of fiber. Why could that be? Have you ever thought about this, man? It is so ridiculous. You're mentally ill, totally delusional, and you're spreading misinformation, selling your cookbooks. Who wants this stuff? It is absolute crap and you're destroying humans' lives. Humans are not meant to eat copious amounts of fiber. Introduce animal foods, especially in their raw form, and you will see that your body will thank you. Legumes, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, that sort of thing. Yeah, that type of thing. Those things that were never available to us since the agricultural revolution. We've never ate those foods, the whole grains, the fruits, the veggies, that wasn't available to us in nature. You vegans at the same time will deny God, of course. Most of you are atheists. Most of you subscribe to a Darwinistic evolutionary perspective. You will debunk yourself by saying evolution is correct, but at the same time we had no access to our species-specific diet. Every biological life form in nature has everything it needs right? The gazelle has water and grass. The lion has water and the gazelle. Everything is given in their natural environment to that biological life form. If you believe in evolution, wouldn't the same apply to us humans? Why do we have to now change our whole environment to be able to eat? And once we do it, we still suffer. Gut dysbiosis, right? Pain, gas. Why is that so? It's unbelievable, man. You're a man in your 50s and you still didn't understand this. Basic. The week by week, wow. we take out a bit of the unhealthy food. We put in a bit more of the healthful stuff. Week by week by week until we're transitioned over. There's a secondary reason why this might be a good tactic also. It's absolutely ridiculous. On that note, if you see a truth, the truth of eating healthy, you should jump right in. If you understand what healthy food is, let's start with something simple. Let's start with a bodybuilding diet. Even though it's not perfect, still, by removing bread, candy, all kinds of junk and replacing it by simple white rice and lean meats, you're much better off right away. And why wouldn't you jump right in? Now let's take it to a keto diet, a carnivore diet, a primal diet. There's absolutely no reason to cling on to a junk food. Look at this normie dumb advice. This man is telling you, oh well, eat still a little bit of the fries and then eat a little bit of beans. What are you talking about? Ridiculous. Now there's certain meat-based nutrients. Ourselves, the animals we eat, can all make them. However, if we're eating uh -huh. exogenous versions, <laughs> you know, by having meat and things, our endogenous production of it will shut down, those genes will switch off. And then so to suddenly take that out, it may just take a little while for our body to notice. Over time it will, gene will get switched back on again and we'll produce our own. I'm talking about things here like creatine, carnosine, Carnitine. Absolutely ridiculous. All of this is essential. You won't produce it yourself. Yet again, you're misleading people. You're spreading dangerous misinformation. None of what you just said is correct. You're destroying humans' lives. They are essential amino acids. They are essential nutrients that cannot be produced by the human body no matter how hard you try. You can just wean yourself off as if animal foods were heroin. Oh. In the interim, it could mean that we don't feel at our best. And again, I think that's one more reason where people sometimes fail if they try to do too much too quickly. 
Mistake number two. Yes, yeah. absolutely ridiculous. Yet again, just try introducing raw animal foods such as sashimi or steak tartar. You will feel better in the matter of minutes. The other side of the coin is eating too little healthful foods. Of course. <laughs> yeah, the glass is half full but half empty at the same time. What is it now, man? Is it too fast of a transitioning or is it too little of health foods? Wow. We need our minimum sort of essential vitamins, minerals, fatty acids for this. All of which you cannot find in plants. You know that you cannot find it in plants. This reason is useful for the first week or two to use a food tracking app such as Chronometer whereby yes for the first week or two right it's not as if vegans use chronometer all their life no it's just the first week or two then you're gonna get the hang of it then it's a well-planned diet yes yes yes. you yes, plug yes. in your foods oh. and you can see you know what your vitamin <laughs> what your mineral and you can see how deficient you are all intakes <laughs> your omega-3, wow. see which foods you're sure of. And of course, then you can research and add more of those foods in. It's not yes. really so difficult. The rule of thumb is that you want to eat the range of whole plant foods each day, legumes, whole grains. The range of health foods. Okay, obviously this is just a graphic, but still, let's have a quick look at this, right? An avocado, some quinoa, some millet, maybe, garlic, blueberries, ginger, maybe a mango, some nuts. You cannot survive on this. It's very, very simple. You can eat the Daily Dozen. You can eat all of this stuff. All of this stuff has been created by humans. None of this stuff was found in our natural environment. Hence, none of this is essential and none of this can give us our species-specific diet. Back, which is, of course, meat. It is a delusion. It looks like the rainbow and therefore it has to be healthy. You're mentally ill. Fruits, vegetables, nuts, Sad. seeds, herbs and spices. Amiga seeds, herbs, and spices. Seeds, herbs, and spices, yet again, won't nourish you. What kind of macro or micro profile do you have in spices? It doesn't make any sense. The seeds are, of course, latent for being full of anti-nutrients. Still, 2021, let's go! Omega-3 is a nutrient of concern, so make sure that you eat enough ground flax. Ground is a nutrient of concern. So make sure to eat flax, la di da di da There is absolutely no proof that humans can convert it efficiently. There is no omega-3 in those plant foods, but ALA. ALA needs to be converted, and in most cases, it does not get converted sufficiently. The same applies to vitamin A. Beta carotene converts to vitamin A. No, it does not. It is a scam. It is a lie. No omega-3, no vitamin A in plant foods. Stop lying. Chia, Shame on you. Walnuts, hemp hearts, that sort of thing. We need to supplement vitamin B12 in the winter months, vitamin D3. One other nutrient of concern. Sounds awesome, right? Sounds like a healthy diet. We need to supplement this. Uh, we need to be concerned about this super healthy diet. Yes. Is iodine. If you're in a country where they iodize the salt, yeah, maybe you're getting your iodine, but you're also getting a load of sodium, which isn't healthy. So ideally, I would say to eat seaweed, that's the best source. A couple <laughs> of sheets of nori, a teaspoon of dulce or arame, one and an eighth of a teaspoon of wakame, or one sixteenth of a teaspoon of kelp powder gives you your 150 micrograms RDA. If you really can't stomach the thought yeah, of sure. eating seaweed, then a supplement's recommended. Yes, then another supplement is recommended. I said it back in the day when I still was a vegan. I knew it intuitively because I actually listened to my body, especially towards the end. I realized B12 is not enough. Vitamin D3 is not enough. EPA and DHA is not enough. Iodine is not enough. I started supplementing with a wide range of things because the deficiency started kicking in. Of course, supplements will never replace real food. It even says it on the packaging. It shouldn't be a replacement for a healthy diet. But this man will tell you that it is healthier if you ingest those chemicals. Absolutely ridiculous. For supplements, I recommend Vivo Life. I'm a brand ambassador with these guys. They're the highest quality. They're sure. third-party tested for over 500 different contaminants. So I really put my trust with those guys. Yeah, put your trust in them, in those. Don't put your trust in God. Don't put your trust in natural foods. Put your trust in Vivo Life because they're third-party tested and they don't have pollutants. It's not about the pollutants. It is about the absorption. You're not absorbing supplements the same way that you absorb real food.
Simple. It's linked down below, 10% off your first order with code HENCH10. You'll be supporting the channel, so thanks in advance if you decided to go with them. Mistake number no. three is going at it too hard on social media. I get it, you've seen the horrors that animals have to endure to end up on our plates. You need it to end yesterday. So of course you're gonna bombard anyone and everyone with all the vegan propaganda in the world. At least he admits it, the vegan propaganda. However, what does that have to do with a healthy diet? No matter what you write on the internet won't change how you feel. It's a mistake. It's a mistake I made when I first went vegan. And what I really learned is, and I'm kicking myself for having not done it now, I wish I'd have kept vegan posts on Facebook, Instagram, etc. I wish I'd have kept it to like one in four vegan and the rest other stuff. If everything's vegan related and people are not vegan, a lot of people are gonna switch off, they're gonna unfollow you, particularly if it's harrowing posts that they don't wanna see, they don't be, wanna be reminded of what they're funding for animals to end up on our plate. No, that's not the point. We all know what we are funding, especially more conscious carnivores that go to farms themselves or slaughter, butcher, hunt themselves. We do know what we are eating and we love it. Most vegans do not know, on the other hand, that they are destroying the natural habitats of animals, that they are killing billions of rodents, such as mice, they're killing multiple billions of insects by their food choices. Nobody talks about that. Doesn't matter. Only cow lives matter. And you end up alienating and losing your audience and then you can't do any good whatsoever. The same with friends and family. If it's all you go on about, you're just gonna Traumatized create disharmony. Children. It's hard, isn't it? Because we consider ourselves nice people. We went vegan because we saw the truth. Of course, our friends and family are nice people, so we just have to tell them, but no, it often... We consider ourselves nice people because we saw the truth. Philosopher King Hench. How do you know what is true? How do you know what truth is? How do you know right from wrong? In a world where we don't have any universal morals any longer, everything is subjective, remember? This is the vegan ideology. There is no God. We came from monkeys. Now we're here. Now we have a society. Now we're gonna do what feels good for us, but at the same time it has to feel good for animals and therefore it is right because I say it is right. Other people say it is wrong, but those people are wrong based on absolutely nothing. It doesn't work that way. It really works that way. And usually friends and family, the people we're closest to, need to hear it from someone else. It's heartbreaking, but it's the truth. All we can really do is lead by example. It is a religion. You know, plant some seeds, share some documentaries, you know. But yeah, traumatize some people with some slaughterhouse porn. Just don't beat people over the head with it constantly. I don't think, unless you want to lose all your friends. Mistake number four is going vegan and thinking that automatically your health is going to be amazing. That is not necessarily the case, particularly now. It's not going to be the case either way. That there are so many junk food vegan items available. As stated earlier, for the best health, you want to eat the majority of your calories with legumes, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, herbs <laughs> and spices. Hench, do you really believe this, man? Look at your face. Do you really believe what you're saying? Man? You believe that a human being will be the healthiest if he eats a bunch of beans and whole grains. Come on, man. Wake up. It is not meant for human consumption. It is peasant food. If you absolutely have nothing else left, you can eat that stuff to get around until you can hunt again. This is by no means healthy and you know this, at least I hope so. It's absolutely ridiculous. The human body, digestive-wise, anatomically, is made to eat animals. Oh. If we eat much in the way of donuts, crisps, mock meats, if we drink fizzy drinks, we can have just as bad, if not worse, health than an omnivorous eater. Some of the worst offenders yes. are things like refined sugar, refined oil, refined white flour. The worst of the worst, and I just never ever would relent on these, I would never let these into my body, is coconut oil, palm oil and cocoa butter, which is used in- Coconut oil is actually not that bad, at least you have some saturated fats. You actually should eat that as a vegan. Chocolates. These contain saturates known as long and very long chain triglycerides. They're the same fats found in meat, eggs and dairy that would- Yes, exactly. And this is why it's not half as bad. <laughs> no lead to heart disease. Heart disease oh, is wow. still the biggest killer even among vegans. And it needn't be that way. Mr.
Even among vegans and it needn't be that way. Hmm, yes, exactly. Vegan logic. It is absolutely ridiculous. So first and foremost, you're not heart attack proof as a vegan. But secondly, shouldn't you ask yourself, how did it all start, right? When did heart disease get so rampant in the Western world? The answer to that is very, very simple. Since the agricultural revolution. What happened during the agricultural revolution? What did we start cultivating? Was it more meat? Of course not. It was more plants. Since we have all of those seed oils, since we have all of those whole grains that are so heart healthy, we see an increase in heart disease. This is how it all started. If you go back into ancient times, you will see that there wasn't that much heart disease. Almost non-existent. So it all started with the agricultural revolution, with the introduction of a bunch of processed plants. And now we should eat more of those processed plants in order to heal heart disease. Vegan logic. Take number five is not doing your research, effing up <laughs> and falling off the wagon. I'll admit to this, veganism currently is extremely trendy. A lot of very no, it's actually not extremely trendy. The trend is declining since 2017. Very cool, famous people are doing it. So people are copying. <laughs> Very cool, famous people. <laughs> cool celebrities. I want to be like them. <laughs> or perhaps people have a health issue. So they're kind of eating whole foods, plant-based. They're, you know, they're being vegan because they're not now uh, harming animals, but say, they clear up their health condition. They've not seen the ethical argument. They've not seen what animals go through. Like, they, you know, easily just go back to eating them. Other issues, eating on the what? go. You want to look ahead, see where can you eat. Perhaps you want to bring some of your own food with you. It's good to know about the Happy Cow app. You can have that on your phone. And yeah, super cool. When I was a vegan, I had that Happy Cow app as well. And yes, it's true. You will find vegan restaurants. Nowadays, it is not hard to stick to a vegan diet. Vegans, wake up. You know yourself. You have vegan restaurants. You have vegan products everywhere you go nowadays. In the Western world, you will have food, quote unquote. Still, people fall off the bandwagon. Why? because their health declines. It is not because they are vicious, evil people. Of course, you see them like that because you are in a cult. Wake up. Those people saw how their body declined. You still don't see it. Somehow, miraculously, you're still in that vegan bubble, torturing yourself. You deserve to suffer. It is okay. It'll tell you local eateries, which are either completely vegan or have vegan options there. If you're a drinker, not something that I recommend. A lot of people don't know that alcohol contains a lot of animal products. Fish bladders in wine, for instance, in the fining process is really quite uh, sick. But there's an app called Barnivore, <laughs> like carnivore, but for people who go to bars, and that'll let you know what are the vegan options. You may get a nonsense editorial or just a friend talking smack about how vegan nutrition is lacking certain nutrients. If you didn't know better, you could easily be dissuaded. Place yes, you could easily be dissuaded. You just said it yourself. You said that there are certain nutrients of concern. You said yourself that you need to supplement. What are you talking about? Of course your diet is deficient. Wow. It's like nutritionfacts.org online <laughs> or... Nutritionfacts.org, right? Nutritionfacts.org is just as factual as Black Lives Matters cares about black lives or the World Health Organization cares about your health. Just because you use a certain phrasing doesn't mean that it's true. Book online or books such as Becoming Vegan by Davis <laughs> and Melina. Just Becoming vegan, just... right? The newborn vegans. Wouldn't you have to say returning to vegan if veganism was our original state? All the facts are Just there. something to think there about. There is no reason nutritionally not to be vegan, but it's good to have the facts at your fingertips. Wow. It's been my observation that oftentimes when people leave veganism, they didn't really get it in the first place. They didn't get the <laughs> ethical argument. Perhaps they didn't watch um, Earthlings, Dominion, Land of Hope and Glory, and see with their own eyes what animals go through. All right, Henshi, let's take my example. I watched all of those documentaries that you just mentioned, literally all of them, multiple times. In the end, when I was suffering, my gut was destroyed, my digestion was a mess, I was depressed, tooth pain, I was falling apart. This is when I re-watch those documentaries, right? In the hope they will wake me up again. They will shake my heart into the right place and I will stay vegan for the animals.
However, in the end, you see those movies and you realize it is propaganda. Because what I started doing, essentially, is going into the real world. I went to real life farmers. I talked to hunters. I saw what it was really about. I saw that in plant production, we are killing much more animals. If you want to be ethical, you would be carnivore to begin with. You would eat grass-fed cows. A grass-fed cow can feed you pretty much a whole year. You could live off one death. However, as I said, cow lives matters. You don't care about the billions and billions of rodents that you destroy, the animals that you displace, the environment that you destroy, and you're creating monocultures left and right. It is absolutely hypocritical. Vegans kill more animals. Because I honestly believe anyone in their right mind seeing that would never ever oh. go back oh. to finding that ever again. Oh. So yeah, it again, your argument doesn't hold up. I saw it many, many times, multiple times, and I saw it in real life as well, right? My uncles are all hunters and butchers. I'm seeing it on a daily basis. The blood, ah, oh, the suffering. And I love it. Why? Because it's our species-specific diet. It is part of life. It is totally normal. You are behaving very feminine. You have a very feminine spirit. You are appealing to emotion. If you see this, then you cannot do it any longer. No, you actually can if you have a right mind because you realize it is totally normal. Even if you're just here for health, which is the reason I started eating this way initially, mm. take a look at these reasons. Sure, initially, after talking about junk food and weaning off junk food slowly, you did it for health initially. You do not know what health is. Horses, it is quite harrowing. However, if it's good enough for your mouth, it should be good enough for your eyes. And <laughs> the added bonus is, if you ever feel like slipping, we deserve good health. Eating animal products is the reason that around 75% of people die in the West. Having no, it's not. It's absolutely not. You have no proof for that statement. You have no science, no studies on populations that eat only animal foods to begin with, so you can single that out. But at the same time, you can see populations that eat more animal foods than certain Western countries. How about Hong Kong? Hong Kong has the highest meat consumption, the highest meat consumption, and has the longest life expectancy. If we look to the blue zones, we will see that they're consuming a ton of organs, a ton of seafood. Those people eat animal foods. Why do they live longer? Why do they have better health? Explain. And seen with our own eyes, Ridiculous. the horrors that animals go through would be Emotion. much less likely to ever go back to that. And then bonus. I can eat a steak whilst watching Earthlings. This is, you know, we get to keep our health and we live happier and longer and, you know, more functionally. Thanks for staying. More functionally. Sure, you seem much happier and more functional. And to the end, I've got a bonus tip just for you. Well, yes. a bonus mistake. And that mistake is trying to go it alone. I feel really sorry for people who don't have any vegans around them and they see the horrors, they wanna go vegan, but their friends, their family are not on board. We can get a lot of ridicule, we can even get attack. And of course, we are social creatures. We need to feel that our standing in our society is not gonna be hurt because historically, when we were in our caveman days, if we were ostracized from the tribe, we're dead. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> we're gonna appeal again to evolution, right? In our caveman days, we did this and this, we did it that certain way, but now, somehow, this still applies, but we have to do it totally different. Yeah, makes perfect sense. Absolutely irrational. That is still within our psyche. It does feel like life or death. Happily, in most places, veganism uh, is booming. There could be a local meetup group. If you find it hard to find them, you can go to meetup.com. It's an easy way to find them, or look such for Facebook groups as well. If there's not a meetup group in your area, start one. Be the change you want to see in the world. If you've had that idea, other people will have it as well, but someone's got to start it. Here in Norwich, we're the most vegan city in the UK, uh, and it all really started. Someone just put a sign outside a health food store saying meetup group at the church around the corner. They hired a room out. The first week, five people turned up. You know, in the end, there's like 80 odd people turned up. It's recently, wow. uh, in recent years, been disbanded it's exploding. not for any bad reason but just the fact that there's so many vegans in Norwich now we don't need like a dedicated group 
If you're unfortunate enough to be in some real isolated sort of backwater place. All right, all right, we get the point. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Long enough as it is. As I said in the beginning, if you enjoyed this video, leave it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comment section as well that you want to see those reaction videos and let me know which videos I should react to next, which vegans or anything non-vegan related is welcomed as well well anyways this is it for today we can only wish henshi all the best so let's pray to god that he will give him eyes so he will see his suffering and he will step out of it eventually if not let him suffer this is what they deserve all right guys. but this is it for today as i said if you enjoyed this video leave it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed already please do so and as always guys may god bless you all much love and peace